ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned a homicide detail. You get a call telling you that the body of a man has been found in the motel room. There's no lead to his true identity. Your job? Check it out. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Tuesday, July 19th. It was hot in Los Angeles. We were working the night watch out of homicide detail. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Warman. My name's Friday. I was on my way back to the main jail, and it was 5.27 p.m. when I got to room 42. Homicide. Hi, how'd it go? He's willing to make a statement. He copped the whole thing. It's going to save us some time. Yeah. It's going to save a lot more if he's gone with us last week, though. Yeah. What do you got? Paperwork. Want to give me a hand? Yeah. Here. Okay. How's the family? Eh, yeah, pretty good. Faye thinks he's got a pan of cider. Hmm? Faye hey, thinks she has a pan of cider. Woke me up at 2.30 this morning, got a pain on her side. Sure it was a pan of cider. Yeah. I told her to call a doctor. No, she didn't think it was that bad. Ooh. Not to call a doctor. Just enough to keep me awake worrying about it. Ooh. And this morning the whole thing's gone, though. No trouble. Says it's probably heartburn. Why don't you give her a couple of your Pepto pals? Oh, Joe, that's very funny. Mm-hmm. Honey. Homicide Friday. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. What's that? What's that address? No, we'll be right out. No, no, not anything. Right. Goodbye. Work? Work. Made at a motel out on Sepulveda, found a body in one of the cabins. Yeah. Thinks it's a suicide. <laughs> Frank and I left the office and drove out to the address. It was a modern motel set back from the highway. There were 14 cabins surrounding a swimming pool on the lot. We met with the woman who had placed the call and the owner of the place. Right over there, number eight. Mm-hmm. Anything been touched in the room? No, sir. As soon as I saw him, I knew what had happened. I locked the door and called you. All right. What's his name? It registered as Tom Rustad in Phoenix. How long has he been here? About ten days. I'd have to check the card to be sure. Is he alone? Mm-hmm. Here, I got the key. Go ahead. Thank you. Bye. Did you touch the body at all? No, I should say not. Mm-hmm. I've worked around motels for a long time, yet and so nothing bothers me. Tell you, though, this almost did like to scared me half to death. Yes, ma'am. Better call a lab, ask him to come out of huh? Yeah. Be all right if I use the phone in the office? Well, sure, you go right ahead. It's on the desk, back of the counter. All right. Thing like this, it, it isn't going to do the place any good. I hope it can be played down in the paper. Yes, sir. This is the first kind of trouble we've had. Suicide. Sure isn't going to help. I wish there was some way to change it. Well, there is, but that wouldn't help much either. What do you mean? He's dead, isn't he? Yeah, but he had help. <laughs> p.m. The crew from the crime lab arrived and started their investigation. Apparently, the victim had been killed with a small caliber gun. However, a search of the room failed to turn it up. The coroner's office was notified they came out to check the body and go through his effects. 6.18 p.m. Frank and I talked with the motel owner in his cabin. Now, here's the registration card. You can see there where he signed it. Mm -hmm. Are you driving a car, do you know? Oh, I never saw one. How'd he get here? You mean when he checked in? Yeah. I can. Mm. Tell you why he was in town? No, he never mentioned it. Did it work? I don't know. When he checked in, did he say how long he'd be staying? No, he said it might be a week, ten days. How about visitors? Did he have any? I didn't see any. What about phone calls? Yeah, he made some. Do you have a record of them? No. Usually we do. All the calls go through the board, but he used the phone booth outside. Okay. 
couple times I was out by the pool at night, you know. Sure. I'd be out there and I'd see him in the booth. A couple of times he talked for quite a while. But you haven't got any idea who he was calling? No. Dime called though. What's that? Cost him a dime. I heard the bell ring when he dropped the money. Well, they all do. You get any mail? No. You pay for his room in advance? Yeah, the first time he gave me the money for a week. And just a few days ago, he paid for another week. How did he pay it? What do you mean? Well, by check or cash. Oh, cash. What size bill, do you remember? I never saw him use anything smaller than a 50. Mm-hmm. Sure seemed to have a lot of them. Just maybe a couple thousand dollars. Did he always carry that kind of money with him? Well, I wouldn't know about that. Mm-hmm. I guess he must have kept something smaller, though. Isn't everybody can change at 50? Not everybody. You gonna let his people know? What's that? Well, he must have some people over in Phoenix that should know about him being dead. Yeah. Sure don't feel it's my place to tell him. No, sir, we'll take care of it. Okay. It's gonna be a shock to him, a guy his age. Probably got a wife and family, not gonna do him any good. No, it works both ways, then. It hmm? didn't do much for him. <laughs> Going over the place, the crime lab found the room had been ransacked. Although none of the possessions of the victim had been taken, there was no money in the room and no personal identification could be found. The place was gone over for fingerprints. Several clean sets were lifted, but they belonged to the dead man. No other usable physical evidence was recovered. The coroner's office checked through the victim's luggage. In one of the suitcases, they found an unstamped letter addressed to a June LaSalle in Reno, Nevada. Its contents explained that the victim expected to be in that city at the end of the month. There was no way of establishing a relationship between the two people. The coroner sealed the motel room, and Frank and I returned to the office. We sent a radiogram to the authorities in Phoenix asking for all information on Tom Rustad. The following morning, Wednesday, June 20th, we got their answer. There it is, Joe. Phoenix? Yeah, take a look. Yeah, boy. It's going to make it rougher. Yeah. I never heard of him. <laughs> In the hope of getting an identification of the victim, his fingerprint classification and description was sent to George Bratton up at CII Sacramento, FBI headquarters in Washington, and to the police departments in the seven western states. A close check of his clothing revealed that Tom Rustad's suits were tailor-made and had been made in Reno. We contacted the authorities there and asked them to check on the tailor shops in the area. We also asked that they check out the woman Rustad had written to. While we waited for the answer, we contacted the cab company that had serviced the area around the motel. We asked them to go over their way bills and report all trips from the motel and all trips to the address. Two hours later, we got the list and started to check out the drivers. Sure, I remember the guy. A couple more like him, I could buy my own cab company. What do you mean? Well, he's a big tipper. Never had anything less than a half a saw buck. Mm-hmm. Down to stand, you got to be a real battler. Who's going to pick them up? You know, the loop? Yeah. Where do you usually take them? Well, different places, restaurants, shows, different places. Did he ever tell you what he was doing in town? Well, we'd talk, you know, a long drive downtown, you'd kind of dull. A couple of times he rode in the front seat with me. Guess maybe the company wouldn't like it, but that's the way he wanted it. Mm-hmm. What'd you talk about? Weather, fishing, lots of things. Yeah. Mostly about girls, though. He thought he was quite a ladies' man. The way he dressed, all that money he should have been. You ever see any of his friends? Listen, how come you're asking all these questions? It's a police matter. Uh, I knew that when I got the word from the front office. They told me to ride with you all the way. Well, what's the beef? You have to roost after something? Investigation. Oh. Uh, now what about his friends? Well, she wouldn't want him to find out about the whole deal. Probably wouldn't call me anymore. What's that? My ship. Who? I don't know her last name. Some bimbo roost had him. Ever meet her? Not swamp. What's that mean? Well, if she was in the cab. You know, I'd pick him up here, drive over to her place, and take the two of them down to a restaurant. Mm-hmm. So a real beauty was a tall, blonde, gorgeous. Bruce Dad was pretty friendly with her, was he? Yeah, I guess so. The way he talked, he liked her a lot. You got her address? Yeah, I suppose. Huh? Well, you guys roused it's going to lead right back to me. It caused a lot of trouble. Tell you, he's a funny guy. I talk about a lot of things, but you don't like to have you ask questions, especially about him. Yeah. Got real touchy when I talk about where he was from, what he did for a living. Yeah. That's why it's important you don't get in any trouble with him. I can use those tips. Well, don't count on them anymore. Huh? They won't be coming. <laughs> We got the address of the woman the driver knew as Marcia. We called the office to check on the wires we'd sent. There'd been no answer to any of them. 1.30 p.m., we drove over to see the woman. The place was a new apartment building on Wilshire Boulevard. On the mailbox, we found the name Marcia Lovequist and the information that she occupied apartment 14. We went up and rang the bell. 
Well, it doesn't look like she's home. Yeah. Let's check with the man again. All right. Sure pretty cool, isn't it, Joe? Yeah. You know, you ought to get a place out here. It'd be great for you. For what, huh? Sure. Nice apartment, cool. Get some fun. Yeah, I got a lot of time for that. Well, once in a while. It wouldn't cost so much. Mm-hmm. Be nice. Me and Faith come over and see you and bring the kids. You bet. Well, you wouldn't want to be a hog about the pool, would you? Not me, Faith. You feel that way, just forget the whole thing. Mm, that's what I was planning. You just forget it. Here's the manager. Can I help you? I wonder if you could tell us where you can find Miss Lovequist. Martha? Yes, that's right. Oh, saw a few minutes ago. Oh, yes, there she is over by the pool. See, with the straw hat. Oh, yeah. Thanks very much. Sure. Thank you, ma'am. Miss Lovequist? Yes? The police officers would like to ask you a few questions. Police? I don't know what I could tell you, but go ahead. Sorry right, if we sit down? Sure. Fill up a couple of stools. Thank you. Thank you. I'll go. Thank you. Thank you. This is Frank Smith. My name's Friday. How do you do? That's fine. Now, what do you want to see me about? You know a man named Ruth said? Yeah, why? Look in trouble about him. In trouble? No, we're just checking. Oh. Oh, what do you want to know? You know where he's from? Me at hometown? That's right. Well, someplace up north. I don't think you ever said. How'd you happen to meet him? Cocktail party, hotel downtown. There was a convention. My agent got me a job as a hostess. Uh-huh. I'm a model to do some work in TV. I just get a little rough to take what you can get. Yeah. Well, Tom was there. We got to talking. Went out to dinner. So I'm quite a bit after that. Did he tell you what he did for a living? No, I don't think so. That was a nice thing. Talked like one. What about this convention? Hmm? You know what it was for? Oh, send it. But he didn't have anything to do with that. He was just there. Oh? Told me he was sitting at the bar and one of the guys asked him to come up and have a cup of drinks. That's all. He wasn't a dentist, though. I see. Do you have any friends here in town, would you know? Yeah, I don't. Listen, why don't you ask him? He'd go along with you. Nice guy. He'd be able to answer these questions a lot better than me. Well, we're checking everybody who knew him. Oh, I see. No, oh, nice guy. He had a lot of fun. Well, when did you see him last, man? Stayed for yesterday. We had dinner, took a drive. Came by for a nightcap, and then he called a cab and went home. Did you hear from him yesterday? No. Didn't really expect to. Why? Well, you see, we had kind of a fight. Nothing serious. I didn't figure I'd hear from him until maybe today, you know. We both got over the mad. Mm. Can you tell us what the argument was about? Well, all the same to you, I'd rather not. It was pretty important that we know. Well, I guess we can't do any harm. He was just getting too serious, that's all. Yeah. Too serious. I told him I had to go out of town on a modeling job. Santa Barbara would be gone a couple of days. He got real mad. He didn't want me running around like that anymore. Mm-hmm. Real possessive. I told him he didn't have any right to tell me what to do, that we weren't married, you know? Yeah. Well, from there, it got loud. Him telling me I wasn't going to Santa Barbara and me saying he couldn't stop me. He finally called the and went home. What time was that? Well, I guess about 3.30. It might have been 4, no later. All right, thank you very much. If you should think of anything else, we'd appreciate a call. Sure. I'll leave you one of our cards. Mm-hmm. Ask for either one of you? Yes, ma'am. Hey, I'll tell you who you ought to talk to. Who's that? Well, you ought to see him anyway. I haven't heard anything, but Tom might have gone over there. Who? This photographer I was going to Santa Barbara with. Tom might have gone over to see him. Can you give us his address? Yeah, I've got it upstairs. Did Roost Dad know this photographer? Well, I'd never met. He knew about him, though. Yeah. That's why I might be able to tell you something. Ma'am? Yeah. Well, Tom thought there was something between us, this other fellow and me. Of course, I told him it was silly. It didn't make any difference, though. Real jealous, possessive. Uh-huh. Said him and the other fellow were going to tangle someday. I hope not. Why? I know the other guy. Yeah. He'd kill Tom. We got the name and address of the photographer, and then we drove back to the city hall. We made a check through R&I, but we found no record on him. 3.06 p.m. Well, looks like we might have a lead. Yeah, I hope it turns out, don't you? Mm-hmm. Homicide, Friday. Yeah. Yeah, Jack. No, we've been waiting for it. Can you give it to me on the phone? We'll pick up the copy later. Okay, go ahead. Mm-hmm. What? Huh? How do you spell that? R-O-S-S. E-L-L-E. Yeah. All right. As soon as it comes in. Yeah, we'd appreciate a call on it. Right. Okay. Jack Ricketts down in communications. Yeah? Got a teletype from Reno. About Ruth there? Yeah. They got a record on him. Real name's Thomas Roselle. That's the name on the letter. Yeah, they ran it down. 
Well, they got him. Been arrested for bunco, grand theft, money, forgery. Haven't been able to make any of them stick. Mm -hmm. And what they say, a couple of months ago, he went into a new line. They figure that's what he's picked in now. What's that? Narcotics. Mm. What about this Rossell woman? She a sister? No, his wife. Huh? Married, got three kids. Her up there and this marshal woman here, and he's playing a real line. Yeah. They come up with anything more? Possible motive, maybe. Yeah. When Roselle left town, they got a rumble he was coming down here on business. Uh huh. Had 12 ounces of heroin to peddle. We put in a call to Narcotics Division and talked to Captain Walter. He told us they didn't have anything on Roselle, but they'd heard about a new supply of high grade heroin being moved into town. We told him what we'd found, and then we drove out to talk to the photographer, the victim's girlfriend had mentioned. Well, I'm sorry, fellas. I haven't got any idea what you're talking about. Have you seen Tom Ruth's dad or Rozell? Sure, I didn't say I hadn't. But I didn't have anything to do with killing him. How'd you know he was dead? It's all over the afternoon papers. Don't you boys read your own publicity? When did you see him? Ruth's dad? Yeah. Right before last. Monday? Yeah, I guess so. Really Tuesday morning. What time? Well, about 4.15. Yeah, that's it. It was 4.15, I remember, because he woke me up. I looked at the clock. Mm -hmm. What do you want? Oh, he had some wild idea there was something going between me and Marcia. Was it? Well, I don't see if that's any of your business, but it doesn't matter to me, so I'll tell you. No, that wasn't. Mm -hmm. She's a model. I'm a photographer. She worked for me. I paid her 25 bucks an hour. That's all I was. Yeah. I ain't going to tell you it wouldn't have been nice, but it just didn't happen. I don't believe in romance around the office. Doesn't do anything that cause trouble. Yeah. What happened when Ruth's dad came in? Oh, made a lot of accusations. I told him they weren't true. Said he had a filthy mind. Told him to get out. Did he go? No, I tried a little muscle. I belted him a couple of times, and that ended it. Mm-hmm. Poured him a drink to show him there weren't any hard feelings, and a couple more. Yeah. Kicked it around a while, and then he left. What did you talk about? Look, am I a suspect? Is that we on my back? We're talking to everybody who knew him. Well, you crossed my name off the list. I belted him, that's all. I didn't shoot him. All right. Did he call a cab from here when he left? No, I was going to, and he decided to walk. Did you see him leave? Certainly. I locked the door after. Yeah. Watched him walk outside from the window there. Must have changed his mind about the cab, though. What? Cab. Must have changed his mind. I thought you said he didn't take one. I said he didn't call one. The cruiser picked him up. They drove off. You didn't get the number of the cab, did you? Well, look, a guy woke me up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Came in here, wanted to start a beef. I finally got rid of him. I'm a 9 to 6 boy. I haven't got time to stand around windows and get cab numbers for you cops. I went back to sleep. All right, unless anything comes up, give us a call, will you? Yeah, sure. Take this card, will you? Oh, look, I'm... Sorry if I sounded off, just that I don't want to get mixed up in it. You can understand that, can't you? Sure. No hard feelings, eh? No. I'll be honest with you, I didn't like Roostad. I didn't like him an inch, but I didn't hate him. Not enough to kill him. Somebody did. We contacted the cab company again and asked them to check the way bills from Nestler's address. They came up with one trip on Tuesday morning. The dispatcher gave us the driver's name and told us where we could find him. Yeah, I remember the guy. Looked like he had a beef with somebody, you know, real cut up. Mm -hmm. Where'd you take him? I think, uh, it was a hotel downtown. Remember the name? I dropped him off at the corner of Margo. He went into a hotel there. See, you know. The Rolling Arms, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, that's the place. All right, thanks a lot. I'm glad to help out. Say, this fellow, he the same one who was killed yesterday? That's right. Well, I sure seen a lot of him. Newspapers, television, a lot of him. <laughs> Always works that way, don't it? What do you mean? After you're dead, you're famous. Mm -hmm. When it's too late to enjoy it. Frank and I drove down to the Roland Arms Hotel. We talked with a clerk who had been on duty Tuesday morning. He remembered a man answering the victim's description and told us he'd inquired about a guest named Wallace Alney. Because of Ruth's dad's insistence, the clerk had put through a call to Alney, and the guest said to let the victim come upstairs. He went on to say that about 30 minutes later, both men had left the hotel together. 9.40 p.m., we went up to Wallace Alney's room. Here it is, John. Yeah, you smashed. Yeah? Wallace Alney? Frank? Police officer, Mike Sarkis. Sure, come on in. This is Frank Smith. My name's Friday. Hi. I'm good. Uh, that's all right. Like a drink? I'm just going to fix myself one. No, thanks. Always like a drink before dinner. Sharpens up the old appetite. Yeah. Mind if we look around? No, go ahead. You looking for anything special? I might be able to help. No, it's all right. All right, Texas Plaza. 
Well, maybe you better tell me what this is all about, huh? You know a man named Tom Roos, Dad? Or Roselle? Why? You know him? Yeah, I met him. I'm clean, Joe. I don't know much about him. Now, what about Roos, Dad? When did you see him last? I don't know, a few days ago. Want to pin it down for us? Uh, Monday. Yeah, Monday. That's the last time you saw him? Yeah, we had a couple of drinks in the bar at the corner. I haven't seen him since. We got two people who say you did. All right. Yeah. Well, then go and talk to them. Leave me alone. You ever been arrested? Why? Have you? Yeah. What be? Uh, I don't think I'm going to answer that. You don't have to. We'll find out. Narco. Where are you from? All around. Name a city. Frisco, Vegas, Casey, all around. How about Reno? Yeah, I've been through. Is that where you met Ruth's dad? Look, uh... What do you guys ask? You got the answer to that when I save some time. <laughs> I got a lot of time. So have we. Well, let's be honest with each other, huh? Go ahead. Why don't you guys lay out what you got and I'll tell you how close you are. That'd be kind of silly, wouldn't it? Why? Like playing checkers with yourself. <laughs> Nothing I can do then. How about the closet? Look, you make a pinch, I got no choice. If you're wrong, I'll own City Hall. I don't think we are. And be my guest. All right, you're under arrest. Charge? Suspicion of murder. I'll take the closet. Save you the trouble. Hmm? I killed him. The search of the closet turned up a driver's license and other identification for Thomas Roselle. They also found a 25 caliber gun, $2,700 in cash, and a quantity of heroin. The suspect was taken to City Hall for questioning. We ran his name through R&I and found that he had several arrests in the state of California for violation of the State Narcotics Act. 12.16 a.m. We got the full story. We were in business up north. Reno? Yeah, we made a lucky buy. Came down here to sell it. I gave him some connections where he could dump it. Go ahead. Been down here a couple of days. He sent a wire telling me the merchandise wasn't moving. I knew it was a lie. Right away I knew it. Good stuff like that. It had to be a market. Mm. And I got the word. What do you mean? Well, a friend of mine, he called, told me about Tom and this Marsha doll, how they were running around. Yeah. This guy told me Tom was going great with the eight, said he dropped about seven grand of it already. Sure, as soon as I heard that, I got on my horse, made it down here. What happened? Couldn't find out where he was staying, didn't have a trace. What about the motel? Well, I didn't know about that. As far as I knew, he was supposed to be here, and that's the way we arranged it. Yeah. I sent out word I wanted to see him for him to get in touch right away. Mm hmm. He did. Tried to give me the same line about how he couldn't sell, there wasn't a market for it. I told him we'd better call the whole deal off. Just give me the stuff back, we call the whole deal off. Yeah. Took some talk, and then we headed for his place. That's the motel. Yeah. How'd you get there? My car. What happened then? Oh, when I saw how much he had left, I told him he was lying. I called him a dirty thief, and we had a fight. I shot him. All right, you willing to give us a statement? Sure, why not? I'll get the no, uh -huh. His wife know you? I guess so. That's too bad. I know her. She's a real nice kid. She's really in love with that town. Guess she took it pretty hard. I wouldn't know. Well, knowing her, she would. Nice kid like that, and he's running around with another broad. Boy, he was a real bum. The way she loved him and doing a thing like that to her. Why don't you take another look? What? What'd you do to her? The story you've just heard is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On November 19th, trial was held in Department 99, Superior Court of the State of California in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. <laughs> Wallace Hamilton Olney was tried and convicted of murder in the second degree and received sentence as prescribed by law. Murder in the second degree is punishable by imprisonment for a period of from five years to life in the state penitentiary. <laughs> You have just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice comes from the office of Chief of Police, W.H. Parker, Los Angeles Police Department. Technical advisors, Captain Jack Donahoe, Sergeant Marty Wynn, Sergeant Vance Frazier. Heard tonight were Ben Alexander, Dick Perrin, Helen Cleave, Lillian Bio, Stacey Harris. Script by John Robinson. Music by Walter Schumann. Hal Gibney speaking. 
Watch an entirely different Dragnet case history each week on your local NBC television station. Please check your newspapers for the day and time. Chesterfield has brought you Dragnet, transcribed from Los Angeles. <laughs> 